Yoav Litvin, welcome to the program. Glad to have you. Thank you very much. You have a fabulous Jonathan Larson quote at the beginning of your new, completely gloriously beautiful book. Um, the opposite of war is not peace, it's creation. That obviously means a lot to you. Yes. I think um, our world is plagued with war. And what is war, if you really boil it down, it's destruction. And it's destruction of bonds between people, between families, groups, countries, right? And a lot of people idealize peace, let's just have peace. But that's not the end game. The end game for me is to create bonds. And art and creation is something that's really devalued in our kind of individualistic society. And I seek with this project to examine uh, with case studies of street artists and graffiti artists who work together how they create the mm. bonds and how different each one of these bonds are. I mean, that's really what To Create is all about. Uh, how did you start doing that work and why? So I started, uh, I became interested in street art and graffiti when I was still in my first career as a neuroscientist. And um, it's a long story, I got <laughs> injured and all I could do was walk. I couldn't really sit or lie down or stand without severe pain. And then I just started walking and reconnecting with New York City mm. on a very visceral level, walking 15, 20 miles a day. And I started documenting it and I published a book called Outdoor Gallery, which looks at 46 different artists. And, but I noticed these collaborations and they fascinated me. Like, this is more than just two people, one plus one. This is much greater than that. So this is where it began, where I looked at different pairs of artists and then I was like, this is a book, this is a real project. And it is interesting because our stereotype, as I kind of alluded to at the beginning, is that artists are all at each other's throats. Who's going to get the most attention? Who's going to get the most money? Who's going to get the most shows? Not true in the graffiti world? Or will it be true once the graffiti artists end up somewhere else? I think it's very interesting to look at dance and um, music, uh, which are inherently kind of collaborative arts. Mm -hmm. Whereas... Like um, journalism, if you don't mind me saying so. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and something like the visual arts, it has collaborative projects within it, but it's much easier to commodify. Right. So I think our culture, again, of this kind of profit-driven uh, culture has capitalized on this and has created an art market of visual art. And um, it's really kind of promoted this individualist approach of the artist who um, is, is kind of a sole genius. But in effect, when you read the history of artists like Picasso, like Van Gogh, they depended on other people. They collaborated mm. with other people as part of their trajectory. Give us some examples of the people you have in your book, because to give people a sense of what collaborations you're talking about. So I have Jilly Ballistic and Al Diaz as the first chapter in the book, and this is two generations of artists. Jilly is um, kind of a, the younger one, and Al Diaz is a very well-known uh, pioneer of graffiti. He started as Bomb One in the Lower East Side. He knew everybody there was to know. Uh, he was a partner with Jean-Michel Basquiat in Samo, which was very uh, famous kind of project. Um, just to elaborate what that was, that was everybody using the same sort of moniker. Correct. Same old. Correct. And something about graffiti, kind of a tangent on this, is that there are graffiti crews. And graffiti crews serve a purpose. First of all, within graffiti you want your moniker, your name out as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So if you have five people writing the same name or one person, five people will cover more territory, right? Then also because it's illegal, you have people actually looking out for you, mm -hmm. okay? So one's on this corner, another's on that corner. Hey, police is coming, and, and, and you can escape. So there's, and that really demonstrates kind of the importance of collaboration, which is support. And the other thing that, well, one of the things that I read about in your book about Jilly Ballistic, this idea of claiming neighborhoods. So support one another, but also support an entire neighborhood as a place of, of, of community, ownership at a time when that's being commodified too. Exactly, and it's, for me it's very interesting street art within an urban metropolis like New York City is, is like flowers. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like an, uh, something organic, something alive that's really coming out of the concrete and showing personality, claiming these neighborhoods that are going through this process of gentrification and commodification as something that belongs to a community. Finally, I guess I'm curious about a couple of things. One is gender in all of this. It seems as if the stereotype of women in most work environments is that we're more collaborative, we work more together. 
but it's also true that we don't tend to get the big dollar and the big ticket um, price on our work. Uh, and we maybe haven't had a chance to do the, so, you know, occupy that solo star place in the art world um, that the men have occupied. So how do you see women navigating um, the good and the bad of that situation? And then finally a question of like, what does all this have to teach about capitalism as we're living it outside of the world of art and culture? So as far as um, gender, I, I highly recommend a book called Creative Collaborations uh, by Vera John Steiner, who writes about this very beautifully. And she looks at a book that's called Women's Ways of Knowing by a collaborative um, four women who wrote it in collaboration. So I'm, I'm, that's why I'm personally very interested in it. And they talk about how it's a cultural, the, the differences between men and women where we tend to think that women are more collaborative and men are less so. It's more of how, how our culture is constructed and not necessarily like anything biological. Or Of course, it has nature and nurture built into it, but that plays off of the culture. Uh, as far as graffiti, it did start out as something very kind of macho, and there was violence involved and getting up and, you know, uh, you dissed me and I'm going to get back at you. And there was a lot of things um, that were very male-oriented, and there were fewer women involved historically. But nowadays, there are so many women who are doing fabulous work, top, you know, they're, they're succeeding just as well as men are, graffiti, street art. Uh, so that's definitely changed, and I think that's a great example of showing how the culture mm -hmm. affects it and not necessarily it's some kind of biological or um, inherent thing. Na nurture, not nature. Right. It's not even just those two. It's really kind of a plethora of, of, of variables. And then the, the, the teaching aspect. I mean, one of the things we've heard from people who try to make cooperative businesses is mm. how hard it is in our culture to have the skills, to acquire the skills, to collaborate, even to make decisions together. Right. Um, we can just about handle voting, right. um, but anything more collaborative than that, pretty hard, people tell us. Uh, are there lessons here that can be more broadly applied, how to actually make something together with other people? Yes, totally. I mean, the book is called To Create for a Reason, for two reasons. One is actually looking at the process of creation. And there you can really learn how these different pairs work differently. You know, um, There's five stages of every collaboration. Um, the first one is connection. The second one is fusion. The third one is transformation, if you're lucky. The fourth one is conflict. And that's really important, too. People shy away from conflict in our culture. People are like, oh, conflict. But no, conflict is really important for progress because that's where you need to be confident, you need to be mature, you need to have a flexible ego to be able to handle critique and then change and evolve. So you have conflict and then you have either resolution or a breakup. In our society of individualism, that's not encouraged collaboration. Right. Why? Because capitalism wants the status quo to remain as it is. So thank you so much for the book. It gives us so many other types of versions of, of history and of the current. It's called To Create, and it has some incredible documentation of art collaborations in New York City. Yoav Litvin is the author and collaborator with the artists. We'll put more information on our website. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.